Hey what's up guys welcome back to our channel. So in this video we are gonna see, what if Naruto joined Anbu and secretly married with Makoto Che. This is part 7, and if you want more then please leave a like, share and subscribe, let's get in the video. As morning came in the form of bright rays of sunlight entering through the gap between the curtains, the raven-haired woman laying on the couch, groaned softly as her eyelids fluttered open to reveal those deep onyx eyes. Her gaze blurred as she blinked a few times to have the world appear around her, but in the end, settled for closing her eyes again. Her reasoning for doing so was because she was feeling way too comfortable to get up now. She had a vague idea that she had fallen asleep on the couch, especially since she had no memory of actually going to bed, but why was the couch this comfortable? She had napped before on the couch in her old home, but that always left her with a bit of a stiff neck and not too well rested. And then there was another thing, the couch was surprisingly warm like it had its own source of heat and it was moving. Like it was breathing. Her own body seemed to rise a bit and then fall down again in a rhythm. Couches weren't supposed to be breathing. So she slowly opened her eyes, narrowing them slightly to shield them from the annoying sunlight that had woken her up from her slumber. What she saw next surprised her greatly, because as her vision cleared her vision was met by the sleeping face of a very familiar blonde. It caused her cheeks to burn up, specifically because of how close his face was. It did make her question, what was he doing here? Had he fallen asleep on the couch too? It was only when her memories started to come back to her that she realized that she had probably trapped him there when she captured him in that hug the night before. It did make her giggle lightly. He probably hadn't had the heart to wake her up again. He was such a silly blonde baka but in a good way. With a light smile, she raised her hand and gently tapped his forehead with her pointer finger. Hearing him groan, she shook her head, removed the arm that she had swung over him during the night, and started to shake him lightly. What she hadn't thought of was their position. While well, she had been laying up against the backrest of the couch, Naruto wasn't. So when she started shaking him, her eyes widened with alertness as the blonde rolled backward and eventually landed on the floor with a loud thud. She placed a hand on top of her mouth, leaning over the edge of the couch to look down at the blonde that was groaning slightly while rubbing the back of his head, what the hell huh, Makoto Basin? He asked confused, staring up at her, which for some reason caused her to fall into a giggling mess. Uh, sorry. I tried waking you up she managed to speak out between giggles, wiping a tear away from the corner of her eye as she stared down at the blonde teen that was looking up at her like she had gone crazy. And you decided that the best way to do so was by pushing me off the couch. He asked with a deadpan expression. The raven-haired woman stared down at him and shrugged, well, poking you in the face didn't seem to work, so why not? It did the job, she smirked. Naruto pouted as she laid there sprawled out on the floor, the smug grinning face of the Ichiha woman staring down at him from above. Getting a bright idea, or so he thought, he extended a hand upward, here, can you at least help me up? Tilting her head so her jet black locks of hair hung down from the side of her face, Makoto just extended her hand down from the edge of the couch, but her eyes widened in surprise, as suddenly the blonde's hand moved past it, grasped onto her wrist, and dragged her forward. W wait a minute. It was, however, far too late to protest. Naruto had already made up his mind and pulled on her arm, so that she rolled down from the couch and down on top of him. What he hadn't thought about was what he'd do next. Because now he was stuck beneath a woman's body, staring directly up into her face, looking just as flustered as she was. Her hair hanging down from her face, making a curtain of black hair strands around them. He was about to respond or possibly apologize, but then again not really. She had caused it herself, but the sound of light footsteps stopped him. Tilting his head backward, his scalp still resting on the floor, he saw Karen staring down at him like he had grown a second head. Aniki? Mikoto-san? What are you doing on the floor? She asked curiously, her gaze shifting between Makoto and Naruto, wondering what had happened. The blonde grunted and let his head fall forward again, so he looked up at the ceiling. Domestic abuse. Was his only response, which only seemed to confuse Karen even further. The woman on top of him shook her head and bonked him on top of his, before moving off of him and standing up. Dusting her clothes off, she giggled, Naruto-kun is just living up to the color of his hair. Now that's just mean Naruto sighed and stood up, stretching his body to get rid of the tiredness. He didn't seem to get a response as the female Ichiha walked around the corner and he could hear her footsteps going up the stairs. Sighing he reached over and ruffled Karen's hair, making the young girl giggle, so what's for breakfast? Is your mother awake? Karen smiled and nodded, reaching up to grasp Naruto's bigger hand with both of hers as she dragged him with her into the kitchen, MHM. She is preparing breakfast and she is making steamed rice, miso soup, and grilled fish. Oh. And she is also making tea. Does that mean you'll finally eat breakfast with us? Naruto raised a brow and looked down confused, finally. Perrin pouted and forced him to sit in the seat next to hers, yeah finally. You haven't had breakfast with us yet. Only lunch. Naruto just blinked as Akari walked up beside the place he was seated, Aheo, Naruto-kun. 
So nice of you to join us for breakfast this morning. She greeted with a mocking tone, placing down a bowl filled with rice and a second one that she poured some miso soup into. The blonde blushed slightly and scratched the back of his head with a sigh, yeah, yeah, I know. I'll try to show up for breakfast from now on, it's just been a few chaotic days. Bakari just shook her head and patted him on the shoulder, that's good to hear, remember that you've missed out on doing the dishes. So, they will be yours to do after breakfast. Naruto blinked and stared, it's my house when did I approve of those rules? He mentally questioned, shaking his head before taking a pair of chopsticks to begin eating his breakfast. Before he could take the first bite of his breakfast, he could hear footsteps on the stairs again. And down came Makoto with Sasuke in tow, both of them having changed out of the funeral clothing by now, leaving only him to still remain in the dark set of clothes. Raising a hand he waved with a small smile, Aheyo, Sasuke-kun. He greeted the young raven. Sasuke had been wiping the sleep from his eyes, not that he had gotten much, and stared as if he was in a Jinjutsu. Naruto Nai had shown up for breakfast. That had to be something new. Aheyo, Naruto Nai. What's for breakfast? He yawned and pulled out a chair on the other side of Naruto and took a seat beside the blonde brother figure. Before the blonde could answer, he had been served his portion of breakfast and soon they were all seated together around the table and eating when Akari lifted her head from her food and asked, anything specific happening today? Makoto wiped her mouth with a napkin as she lowered her chopsticks and looked down at Sasuke before turning her gaze onto the redeed, taking the recent events into consideration, Hokage-sama has informed me that Sasuke-kun has been allowed to have a momentarily leave from the academy, but in order for him to still keep up with the class and not have to retake this year, I have to pick up some homework for him today. Naruto could visibly see Sasuke's face drop but wasn't completely sure whether or not it was because of a reminder of the things that had happened or the mention of homework. I see, Karen and I have to go to work in around an hour. Or rather, I'm going to work and Karen has been rather great at keeping me company during my shifts. Akari responded, sending a warm smile down toward her daughter that just grinned with rice covering the corners of her mouth as she ate her food with glee. The raven-haired woman smiled at the interaction between the mother and her daughter before she looked over to the blonde Yuzumaki that was eating his food quietly, what about you Naruto-kun? Knowing you, you're probably busy the entire day and night. She snorted, a mocking grin on her face. Naruto deadpanned and lifted his eyes with an amused look, actually, I've first got to go around noon. Give or take. Oji-san told me that I didn't have to show up too early today, so I thought that perhaps I'd relax for once. Sasuke seemed to perk up a little at that, lifting his head up to look at the blonde, can you maybe help me with my homework then? I also have to do shuriken training at some point. Bakoto frowned a bit and sighed, sorry Sasuke, but I was told to pick your homework up around noon as well. The young Ichiha frowned heavily at that and started just picking at his food with his chopsticks, oh, okay then. Naruto frowned too at the sight, but then got an idea. So he gently elbowed Sasuke in the side and leaned down, placing a hand beside his mouth as he whispered, you know, I've gotten an office at the Hokage Tower. So if you bring along your homework, I bet we can get a look at it as I do today's tasks. Sasuke's eyes instantly lit up at that, his head turning with lightning speed, you mean it. The blonde chuckled and placed a hand on top of Sasuke's head, ruffling the boy's hair slightly, sure do, I mean, how hard can academy homework be? Bet I could I give you all the answers with my eyes closed. As he finished his sentence, he heard a cough from Makoto as she gave him a skeptical look. So with a gulp, he chuckled slightly, I mean help you, with the answers. Does that mean you can help me with shuriken training before we leave? I can perfectly throw them when I only hold one or two in my hand, but when there are more than that it doesn't really work out. Sasuke pouted, hoping that the blonde would say yes. I don't see why not, I'm sure you just have to fix your stance and grip a bit to adjust to the weight difference. Is there any difference between when you throw one shuriken at a time and when you throw two? Naruto asked curiously, taking the last bite of his breakfast before pushing his dishes away. Sasuke looked a bit thoughtful at that and nodded slowly, well, yeah a bit. It does feel like even if I mostly hit dead center when I throw two, there are times where one of the two missed the bullseye as well. Naruto smiled slightly, it indeed sounds like you just have to get used to the weight difference. Well it won't be as big of a problem in the future because you grow stronger and bigger every day, it may be a good idea to get used to a second stance until then, so you can always get your desired results. So it will be an easy thing to master. Well, assuming that it is indeed just a matter of what I told you, then we're probably done before you even throw the first shuriken. Naruto acknowledged, chuckling slightly as Sasuke pumped his fist with a quiet yes escaping his mouth. It made the blonde smile a bit, it was nice to see Sasuke being a bit happier. He had seemed a bit gloomy when he had first arrived in the kitchen. It had probably been a mix of being tired and feeling sad, but at least he was smiling now, which was the important thing. The rest of breakfast went by quietly. A bit too quiet for everyone's taste, but the mood was still somewhat gloomy. 
There wasn't really much to be said during the time, so the atmosphere was easily noticeable as they ate their food in silence. Despite the attempts at hiding it, it was quite obvious that three out of five at the table weren't in the best of moods. When people had started to get ready for their day, Naruto stood, staring out of the window, as he washed the dishes and placed them on a towel beside the sink so the excess water wouldn't get anywhere. His eyes were locked on Sasuke who was keeping himself busy with his shuriken practice. It was easy to see that he and Itachi were brothers, even to someone that didn't know they were beforehand. They both coped with difficult matters the same way by occupying their minds and thoughts with training as the distraction. Why don't I dry the dishes off? It sounded like he really wanted your help with some pointers. Blinking a few times as he refocused his mind, Naruto turned his head to face Makoto that had, at some point, made her way to stand beside him, gazing out at her son from the kitchen window. Naruto gave a short snort followed by a chuckle as he dried a plate off and put it up in the cabinet, heh, if Akari figures out that I ditched the dishes again, then I'm likely to get an earful later. He joked lightly, noticing a small smile on the older woman's features as she snatched the towel from his hands. With a short shake of her head, she grasped onto a plate and started to take over, just say that you were following orders, isn't that the usual protocol? She smirked up to him, watching the blonde teen roll his eyes as he dried his hands. Giving a mock salute, Naruto bowed his head with the most serious face he could muster. Which wasn't much, considered he was about to lose it. Hi, Taichu. I shall comply with thy bidding, even if it shall cost me my life. Hail the Empress. The Kodo snorted and put down the dishes she had dried off and swirled the dish towel around a few times before playfully whipping the blonde's face with it. Stop being such a goofball. You're so annoying. She laughed with a slightly larger smile on her face, letting the teen in front of her know that it was all for fun and that she didn't actually mean the words. Naruto's eyes widened as he rubbed his forehead where the towel had slapped his skin. Narrowing his eyes, he reached behind him and grabbed a spare towel and mumbled, it's treason then and whipped it in her direction, making her squeal with surprise, along with a daring grin on her face. Stop being so overdramatic, you're supposed to be an anbu. She laughed and leaned back against the counter, while forcefully pulling the towel out of his hands and throwing it in the opposite direction. Tuckling lightly, Naruto waved his hands around before walking past Mikoto, fine, fine, if you so insist. I'll go check on Sasuke-kun. He smiled and nodded his head gratefully at having been relieved of dishwashing duty. Naruto. Blinking slightly, Naruto stopped in his tracks and started to turn around, but paused completely in his movement when he felt a pair of warm soft lips on his cheek that disappeared a few moments after. His entire face turning light pink as he lifted his palm to place it on his cheek while looking at the raven-haired woman that was smiling sweetly at him. Closing her eyes, she nodded her head down, thank you for everything you did for me last night and staying with me even until morning. I, I had the best sleep in a very long time. In years in fact, even if it was on a couch. She laughed softly, opening her eyes again to look at him. The blush on Naruto's face intensified a bit as he scratched the back of his head before it eventually faded and he just gave a warm smile. Anytime, unless you want to make a habit of pushing me onto the floor in the morning. Jokes aside, you don't even have to ask. And with that, the blonde wandered off and out of the door. The Kodo followed his movement outside from the kitchen window as she finished the dishes, wondering slightly to herself if that would be okay. She hadn't slept like that in years. For once after a long time, she had actually felt relaxed and safe in her sleep. It had been like laying in the shadow of a tree at the beach on a warm summer day in Hai no Kuni. Saying it had been amazing may not even be that far-fetched. It did however make her frown a bit. Because when thinking back to when she had last had a similar experience was when she was much younger. She didn't mean that her sleep had been terrible during her marriage, but it had been content. She had slept, but something really hurt when thinking about it. Marriage was supposed to be more than just being content, right? not that she would change anything. She loved the kids it had brought her more than anything, but sometimes, she just dreamt that she had gotten the exact same two lovely boys, but with someone that put in the effort to make her feel loved. Sasuke groaned loudly out of frustration as he once again threw his three shurikens, the first two hitting dead center, but the third missing the target altogether and proceeding to fly beyond the training ground and into the bushes beyond. Every damn time. He fussed and stormed over, grasping onto the first shuriken, and tried to angrily yank it out of the wood, only to find himself unable to. Glaring at the stuck weapon, Sasuke felt like pulling the hair out of his head until he saw a bigger hand enter his field of vision, which pulled the shuriken free seemingly without effort. You know, frustration won't do any good. It'll only make it worse. The young Ichiha heard, pouting a bit as he looked up at his blonde brother figure. Sorry, Naruto Nai, he whispered and let his arms drop to his sides. Naruto tilted his head a bit and handed Sasuke the shuriken and an extra to compensate for the one he had thrown away earlier, before ruffling the boy's hair, why are you apologizing? It's okay to be sad and frustrated. Honestly, I'd be more concerned if you weren't. 
The blonde spoke softly as he crouched down beside the boy to get an eye height. Sasuke just sighed and turned around, never mind. Was his simple response, which in turn caused the blonde counterpart to raise a brow at him. It's okay to be frustrated, it'll work out. It just needs practice. Though, I have a feeling like that isn't the only thing that bothers you. Naruto asked as he sat down cross-legged and watched Sasuke throw the shuriken again with gritted teeth. Taking a deep breath Sasuke stormed over and yanked the shuriken free of the targets and waltzed back in place, I told you it doesn't matter. I'm fine, no point in talking about it. Yeah, and the sky is purple. I understand that you don't want people to worry, but bottling it up is bad for you. Trust me, I almost had a battle to the death with my sensei over it. Scowling to himself, Sasuke glared at the older teen from the corner of his eyes I told you I don't want to talk about it. So could you just drop it already? If you aren't gonna help me train, then why are you even here? Is caring about you not enough reason to be here? Carelessly tossing the shuriken out of his hand, so one almost hit Naruto, Sasuke threw his arms into the air, why do you care so much? You're not even in a chair. My family was killed, not yours. That's not true. My family was killed. It may be a long time ago now, but I know exactly what you're going through. I may not be in a chair, but just because I'm not doesn't mean that I can't care. Naruto smiled slightly and idly placed his foot against the shuriken that barely missed him. But why do you care? Why? It has nothing to do with you. It was a fair enough question. Though, the answer was fairly simple. At least to the blonde. Sasuke, how long have we known each other now? Lowering his head slightly, Sasuke started glaring holes in the ground beneath him, for as long as I can remember why. What does that have to do with anything? Naruto stood up from his seated position and walked over to gently pat the boy on the shoulder, that's right. I was one of the first people that wasn't in Achiha to meet you. I can still remember the day. And it didn't take you long to start calling me something, which gives me all the reason to care. What? You started calling me brother, you did so just a moment ago as well. You call me Naruto Nai, you've done so for years. I can still remember your dad's expression when he first heard it and just how confused you looked when he started questioning why. The mention of that did manage Sasuke to crack a small brief smile, yeah, and so what? Shaking his head, Naruto ruffled the boy's black hair, if you acknowledge me like a brother, then what kind of brother would I be if I didn't even care in the slightest? And do you honestly think that if I didn't feel the same way that I'd let you call me brother? I see you as my little brother too, even if your hair is considerably darker and far more duckish than mine. He quipped with a smirk. I guess that makes sense he pouted. That's why I want you to let me know how you feel. I can't help you if you don't let me and I think that I've shown I care. So why don't you let me know what's on your mind? The younger boy shrugged and fidgeted around slightly, I don't know what to feel. I don't understand it at all. This was at least a start. What is it you don't understand? I don't understand that when everything seemed fine, then Itachi just Itachi just kills our entire clan. The frustration was more than evident in the boy's voice as he kept talking, which just sat in the blonde. Letting someone that already knew about the reason behind the massacre know that he was in on what happened was one thing, but revealing the true reason behind it to someone that was completely unaware. Yeah, he most likely wouldn't get whole skin through that. Telling Makoto was one thing, but he didn't know if he could tell Sasuke without getting put in jail for treason. I wish I knew I had answers, but I'm confused too. Naruto lied with a sigh, I just know that I won't stop looking before I find an answer. I didn't get to hear much, it was mostly just an ass beating on my part. He tried to joke, which failed miserably. He didn't technically lie here, since he was shown the truth compared to being told about it. It was probably still a lie nonetheless. If someone like you, who spent almost every day with him didn't know anything at all, then did I even know him at all? Sasuke whispered out, which caused Naruto's eyes to widen. Yeah, he had asked that same question when he had entered the compound that night. So fueled by negative emotions and questions revolving around whether or not he actually knew the person he called brother as much as he thought he did. Wrapping an arm around the young boy, Naruto gave him a brief squeeze, as hard as it is to stop, then it's pointless to think about it right now. We don't know enough to come up with a conclusion, the best we can do is to move forward from this. It'll be hard as hell, but I'll be here for you through it all. I promise. How can I believe you? Tilting his head confused, Naruto raised a brow, what? How can I believe you? Itachi said the absolute damn thing. That he would always be there because he was my older brother. Then where the hell is he now? He lied. So how can I know that this isn't a lie either? How how can I know that you won't just abandon us as he did? By the time he was finished, tears were already steadily flowing down his face. I don't know. Naruto sighed and tried to bring Sasuke into a hug, but the raven-haired boy just stepped away to keep staring at him trying to find the truth in his words. I don't know what to say or do to make you believe me, at the end of the day I can only really give you my word and hope that you'll believe it.
Sasuke just looked away and started to wipe the tears away from his face. As he stared at the blonde from the corner of his eyes, he clenched his fists and whispered, I don't know what to believe anymore. Well, I feel the same. There isn't a lot of stuff that I have the answers for, but there is one thing I do know. Naruto paused as Sasuke turned his head to fully face him again. His eyes red and puffy, a big frown on his face as he stared intensely at the blonde's azure eyes. If I abandoned the people that gave me a home again after I lost everything, then I'd be a bigger scum than I could live with being. The raven-haired boy's lips started trembling before he flew forward and all but slammed his arms around the blonde's neck, placing his face in his shoulder as the tears fell like a waterfall from his face. Naruto lifted his arms up and wrapped them around the younger boy and returned the hug while sadly looking at the ground behind him. I wish I could tell you everything so that it wouldn't hurt. Hopefully, I can do that one day. So that you won't hate him for what he did. I'll remove Danzo from the equation and do everything I can to bring Itachi home and clear his name. I promise. On the inside of the house, Makoto stood with a smile on her face as she watched the exchange between the two boys through the window. She decided that it had to be luck that someone like Naruto was around for Sasuke in these times. Honestly, the thought of what could have happened to him if he hadn't been there scared her. He's something else, isn't he? She heard from her left and turned around to see Akari walking up beside her to watch the blonde boy comfort the young Ichiha. The raven-haired woman nodded and started to prepare some tea while looking up at the clock, there was still a bit of time before she'd have to go pick up Sasuke's homework. He certainly is. He has always been rather unique. T. Bakari looked out at the blonde out in the garden, what do you mean? She asked out of curiosity, before nodding her head in the other woman's direction with a smile yes, thank you. She replied to the kind offer and picked up two cups. Bakoto poured them both a cup and sat down at the kitchen table, from where they could still watch over what they were doing from inside of the house. Naruto has always had this thing about him I suppose. It's hard to explain, but I guess you could say he's like sunshine. He's a selfless boy that always wants to help others. No matter the cost that's just how he is, but I'm sure you know that. The redeed nodded and sat across from Makoto at the table, sipping slowly at the warm tea, it's hard to disagree about something like that, I mean, who else would just wander to a foreign nation and challenge the authorities for two people he didn't even know beforehand. She giggled slightly as they watched Naruto and Sasuke separate out in the private training ground. That's a very good question. I doubt anyone else would, especially if it's without some kind of reward or payment. Seems like he's done it a couple of times by now. Always the same with him, I wonder how long he can keep it up. There was a hint of sadness in the woman's voice as she rested her chin on her palm. The Yuzumaki blinked before turning her gaze onto the woman in front of her head and away from the duo outside. I'm afraid I don't follow. Bakodo sighed softly and rubbed her cheek, he saved the future of the Yuzumaki and the Ichiha. He also saved Kakashi from himself, or well, is in the process of doing so. Kakashi-kun was the student of his father, and they have been like siblings since the day Naruto was born. Why would Hadik-san need saving? Akari questioned a bit concerned. True, she may just have just met the Scarecrow a couple of days prior, but he had been nice and welcoming. Even a bit more than the rest of the village had been, and they alone had been incredibly friendly toward them. The Ichiha bit her bottom lip and leaned back in her seat, it's a bit of a private matter, but Kakashi-kun has lost a lot of people. And Naruto has been a very good friend to him throughout it all. Akari nodded with a small smile, looking back outside to watch Naruto help Sasuke out with his stance, I just hope he doesn't forget to take care of himself while well, he's too busy looking after everyone else. She noted softly and took a sip of her tea. By the time Sasuke had come back down to earth again and was in a seemingly better mood, Mikoto had arrived with the homework that he was supposed to complete for the academy. Apparently, he was going to receive a week's amount of work to go through, which seemed fair enough. All the books and supplies needed to do so were also made available for him. So at the moment, Sasuke was walking beside Naruto with his bag swung over his shoulder as they made their way through the streets of Konoha. Sure, they could just jump across the roofs and make it there in record time, but the older one figured that there was no point in rushing. They'd take the time they needed and perhaps a change of atmosphere would be just as beneficial for Sasuke at this point. There was one thing that was bothering him slightly, Sasuke seemed to be a bit anxious as they walked the streets. And he was starting to figure out why, because as they waltzed through the spaces with more and more people, it was like it got worse. So addressing the elephant in the room, Naruto tilted his head down and asked. Something wrong? Sasuke blinked in surprise at the sudden question and tilted his head upward to meet the blonde's gaze, I don't like the way they all looking at me. Ah, so he had been right. It had been the most likely thing to be the issue, but it was better to be safe than sorry. Reaching down to ruffle his hair, causing the raven-haired boy to pout lightly, Naruto responded, yeah, it's a real pain. Isn't it? Trust me, it's the worst thing to endure in the beginning, but it's better to get used to it from the start. 
Looking a bit confused, Sasuke kept his focus away from all the prying eyes, how so? Wouldn't it be better if we just ran there? Or you just like, took the shinobi highway across the roofs and to the Hokage tower. Naruto just shook his head in negative, afraid not, the problem is that you and your mother have been kind of isolated at the house since it happened. The villagers know as little as we do about it, and frankly, their only way for them to make theories and assumptions is by seeing us. I had to go through the same thing, just ignore them, and it'll eventually either stop being an issue, or it'll bother you less since you became used to it. What if neither happens? Naruto just chuckled a bit at that, do as I did, prioritize learning how to access the damn highway. That's the easiest way to avoid all the stairs, I didn't remember seeing it stop anytime soon, so I just avoided them all the time. Before I knew it, they didn't look at me like this anymore. Sasuke nodded his head briefly, can you teach me how to do it? Shrugging his shoulders, Naruto nodded, sure, I don't see why not. Psychical exercise is just as important as studying, and we can't have the top cat at the academy lose his place on the pedestal. The blonde teased and clapped the younger boy on the back, despite the disapproval from said person. With a pout, Sasuke crossed his arms over his chest, what's the point of being the best in the academy if I can't even graduate early as you and Itachi did? Naruto raised a brow and shook his head at that, you don't have to graduate early to be good Sasuke, you should see this as an opportunity. Not a lot of good comes out of graduating early, you see, you have the best potential to gain a lot of friends and comrades that's your age. Do you not have any friends your age? That made Naruto snort with a chuckle as he felt a pang of pain in his chest, I do, but not a lot. I think the only real person left at my own age that I speak to is Hanasan. Even though we're more acquaintances than friends, so I suppose I don't actually. I speak better with people like Kakashi Nai and Gai Sen anyway, even though Gai is always yelling about springtime of youth. What's the springtime of youth? Sasuke innocently asked, intrigue building when he saw Naruto flinch with a look of pure fear on his face. Grabbing Sasuke's shoulders, Naruto looked him dead in the eye, pray to Kami that you'll never find out. Once you've seen it, you can never unsee it. It'll be burned into your mind, with or without the Sharingan, like a thousand suns, and it'll haunt you in your dreams till the day you die. To say that Sasuke felt like Naruto was over-exaggerating would be the understatement of the century, but if he seemed this traumatized, then there was probably some truth to it. So he hesitantly nodded, to the blonde's relief, as the two made their way into the Hokage Tower and up the stairs. As Naruto unlocked a door after greeting the secretary with a polite smile, Sasuke looked inside the room and was really impressed. The place was quite big, and there was so a lot of room. Placing a hand on Sasuke's shoulder, Naruto nodded at him, go on, take a place at one of the chairs in front of my desk. It appears that my work hasn't been delivered yet, so I'ma go see Oji-san and see what he's got for me today. Sasuke briefly nodded and waltzed inside and pulled out a chair to sit in, with a small sigh he unpacked his bag on the desk, whilst making sure it wouldn't take up too much space. Naruto Nai was going to be working here, so it would be counterproductive and probably a real pain if he decided to steal the desk for himself. Before Naruto could even enter the Hokage's office, the secretary had already pulled out three large books and handed it to him. Apparently, Hiruzen was in some kind of meeting or conference, whatever you decide to call the annual nagging by the other elders and shouldn't be disturbed at the moment. It made him sigh with an apologetic smile though. Sorry Oji-san, I guess I can't save you this time. Hang in there, and I'll let you borrow the newest volume of Icha Icha that my perverted godfather sent me. And with that thought, he joined Sasuke again and took a seat in his new office. The boy was already working on his assignments, so he figured that he should at least make an effort of being a good example as well. Even if it meant dutifully completing his paperwork after finishing and checking up the seals of the day. What a drag, but oh well, at least he'd have company throughout it all. Sighing, he opened up the books in front of him and took a look at the matters he was supposed to attend to today. There was one from the hospital, and one from the academy, and the last was apparently a request submitted by the Jounin commander. Kanoha, of course, had a place to house criminals that hadn't exactly done crimes bad enough to either be executed or contained in an Anbu holding cell. So, there was the prison building located in the outskirts of the village, but the problem with it was that somehow two prisoners had managed to escape earlier this month. The criminals had been caught not too soon after their escape, but still, it was troubling news. Apparently, they wanted him to come to check the facility since they feared that there may have been some security or alarm seals that weren't working properly anymore. Seals, like any other thing in the world, faded over time, though the ones in constant use would most likely be worn out quickly, even if they could last for a couple of years. And if he recalled correctly, he had never done any kind of maintenance in the prison before. This really had become troublesome quite fast, and he hadn't even formally started working yet. Oh well, if they were aware of the issue then there should be more guards around the place. 
so he could afford to wait to take care of that until later, especially since he'd promised to help Sasuke out and he honestly didn't want to face the wrath of an angry kid. The issue with the hospital wasn't really an issue, but more like a routine check. The hospital was one of the most important places in the entire village, so its safety and functions always needed to be top-notch. So in the book there were reports of which seals were used, as well as how much the seals were being used from the staff, as well as the other seals, just in case they needed to be checked. Additionally, the current seals that seemed like they might be problematic were showcased, so that Naruto would be able to analyze it ahead of time and maybe create a better solution, aside from just fixing up the chakra flow. The hospital also had more than one backup seal for each area, most places did. It was made like that so that the place wouldn't have to be vulnerable during the time that a seal master would either set up new seals or reconstruct the old ones. The academy one was kind of the same thing. This being that it was mostly annoying maintenance work. However, this one was a bit different, along with the book was an apologetic letter from some Yamino Ruka that apologized many times because they had been too busy to notice that the detection barrier surrounding the academy had stopped working. Seriously, how did they even miss that? Troublesome. Anyhow, aside from just going over the documents, he was also going to have to duplicate everything himself so that he knew which areas had which seals and the general status of the seals and also go over any potential additions that each area could potentially need. It's times like these that I actually miss getting these random jobs where Ibiki would summon me at late hours to actually go check on things. This is just paperwork, damn you Oji-san, you planned this from the beginning. He pouted and put aside the book regarding the prison and the one regarding the academy. Those two would most likely need him to be there in person, anyway, so why bother with those first? Nah, Naruto nai. Blinking as he heard Sasuke call out his name, Naruto stopped pouting at the books before him and raised his head to meet Sasuke's gaze. Hmm. Scratching the back of his head, Sasuke looked down at his books, I'm not quite sure I get this, or I think I do, but it's like I'm missing something. The smile morphed onto Naruto's features as he moved his chair a bit to the side and raised his hand to pat the free space on the other side of his desk, well, come on over here then. Hopefully, I can help, but keep in mind that it's been ages since I went to the torture I mean the academy. You sure? You seemed a bit busy before, I don't want to interrupt your work. Sasuke mumbled out. Waving his hand with a sigh, Naruto felt tempted to move the chair for him and just place him there, ma, ma, you'd be doing me a favor by doing so. Now get over here, don't force me to drag you along. He smirked. If you're sure Sasuke trailed off and dragged his chair along with his homework and sat down beside the taller boy. It's just that the question here asks what the Shadame was known for, and I know that the Shadame Hokage was known for his wood release, that's correct, right? Naruto gave a nod at that and rested his cheek on his hand while probing his elbow on the desk so he could get a better look at the book Sasuke was answering questions in. Hi, Hashirama-sama was quite famous for that, but that wasn't the only thing he could do of course. He's also known as the founder of the village, that should also be notable enough to write down as an answer. What aside from his wood release? I mean, it gave him enough power to battle Ichiha Madara back in the day, right? Sasuke asked as he quickly wrote down what Naruto had said. Scratching his cheek briefly, Naruto smiled slightly and pointed at the picture of Hashirama beside the question, referring to what he was known for. Hashirama-sama was of course known for the wood release, but the things he could do with it was just as impressive as the ability itself. He could suppress the QB and the other biju with it, and as you just mentioned, one of the biggest things that went down in history regarding him was that he fought Madara and won. It's also quite awesome that he managed to do so while Madara controlled the QB. So it was essentially two against one, and yet he came out victorious. Sasuke looked really impressed with that, he had of course paid attention in class and all that, but they had never really gone this much into detail about the Shadame. At least not yet, perhaps they would in the future. Shadame-sama must really have been amazingly strong then. Yeah, the only people that came close to matching that power was the other Kage, but mostly our own. Nidame sama was no joke either, even if he did create an entire scroll filled with forbidden techniques, he was awesome in his own right. He's the reason we have an education system, the academy, and he also created the Anbu. Naruto trailed off, a bit unsure of whether or not all this history would bore Sasuke, but the look on the boy's face said he was paying complete attention to what he was saying. Perhaps he should be an instructor if he was this good at getting kids to listen. Wah, no way. If he even dared to voice that joke, then Oji-san may make it happen. And that would certainly be the end of him. As much as he loved Sasuke and Karen as if they were his own siblings, then they could be a real handful. Anidame did all that. He created the Anbu and even the Academy. Sasuke asked with a bit of awe. Naruto just nodded at that and eyed the book over before pointing at a picture of the Nidame. He created a ton of techniques too, he was quite something else. 
while Hashirama had been the strongest, there was no doubt that Tabarama was by far the smartest of the two. He even created the basics of the technique that made my father the factor that caused us to win the last war. The Horation. The rest of the afternoon was spent like this, Naruto managed to finish the work he needed for the hospital and the academy, within his office, so the only real place he'd really have to spend time at later on or some other day, was the prison. He did all of this while doing his best to answer any questions that he could for Sasuke, and to say that the boy had been more than happy to listen was an understatement. Somewhere down the road, the two had even started discussing people that weren't part of the questions. Not that it could hurt if there were any other questions in the future about these people, then Sasuke would be well prepared. And speaking from experience, Naruto knew that these questions would come up eventually. Sasuke was still young, so stuff like the bingo book was still new to him when Naruto mentioned it. So the blonde had gone into detail about what it meant being placed in there, and even went as far as to talk about Shisui and a few others that had managed to get their names written in that book. Before they even knew it, the sun was setting in the background. Time had flown by, right under their noses. So as they packed up their things and left the office behind them, Naruto ruffled Sasuke's hair with a kind smile on his face. Go on ahead, I have to go see Oji-san real quick about something. I'll be home for dinner. Sasuke pouted lightly, but nodded nonetheless, all right. See you at home Naruto Nai. He waved, with a bigger spring to his step than earlier this morning. Seems like this day had made the boy a bit happier and improved his mood. Which meant that the blonde had been successful. Naruto stood there in place as he watched Sasuke jog down the stairs and out of his field of vision. When he couldn't see the young boy anymore, the smile fell from his face, revealing the frown that had been hidden beneath. Clenching his fist lightly, he took a deep breath and turned around and walked towards Hiruzen's office. With a sigh, he raised his fist and knocked on the door, and when he got permission to enter the office, he did so. Shutting the door behind him, he came face to face with the Hokage sitting behind his desk in the dimly lit room, the sun going down in the background behind him. Naruto-kun, what are you still doing here? I'd have thought you'd leave with Sasuke-kun. I saw that you brought him along with you today, I assume you've been quite busy then. The Hokage questioned and leaned forward in his seat. Naruto nodded his head slowly and answered, Hi, Sasuke Kun had some homework from the academy and asked if I wanted to help him. So killing two birds with one stone, I brought him here as I worked. Hiruzen nodded his head, accepting the answer while putting aside some paperwork on his desk, I take it that this wasn't what you came to discuss with me. Shaking his head, the blonde looked up into the dark corners of the room, could you clear the room? I'm going to put up a silencing seal. The old man's eyes narrowed slightly at that, but waved the anbu hiding in the office nonetheless. As the presence disappeared, Naruto idly touched the doorframe as a glowing seal appeared, signaling that the room was indeed now soundproof. Hiruzen sat behind his desk and eyed Naruto carefully, resting his elbows on the desk as he put his fingertips together in front of his face. So? He questioned, his eyes inspecting every feature of the blonde's face. He had watched as he brought Sasuke along in the morning and seemed to be in a fairly decent mood. Yet, the look on his face was far different now. Looking up at the pictures of the previous Hokage, Naruto sighed and turned his gaze back to Hiruzen, you know what I plan to do. And, I'd honestly feel better if I had your backing in it. I know that what I want to achieve is dangerous, but I can't just turn a blind eye to it. Not this time. The older man gave off a deep sigh and lit up his pipe, letting the smoke flow from the end and to the ceiling, I see. With our previous talks during training and in the hospital after the massacre, I kind of figured it would come to this. At first, I had hoped it was just some anger you had to get off your chest, but you're quite serious about it. Aren't you? Naruto's face was completely serious, though there was burning anger and a raging fury behind his eyes. Which honestly scared Hiruzen. Naruto had usually been this bright boy that he had high dreams for. He expected a lot from this young man, yet there was something unsettling about that gaze in his eyes. I can't just let Danzo get away with this. No, I can't let anyone get away with the things they are doing. Danzo has been a thorn in everyone's side for far too long, and he crossed the line. Without authority he ordered Itachi to murder his own family, he didn't have the right. He stole Shisui's eye and forced him to commit suicide. I need to stop it before he hurts anyone else. Naruto spoke out in a matter-of-fact tone. Taking a deep breath, Hiruzen moved the pipe away from his mouth again and exhaled a small cloud of smoke, I take it you plan to go through with it, no matter whether or not I support it. You know I won't stop you, but I can't protect you either. I just hope you know the risks. Yes. No matter what it takes, I'll take care of Danzo. His time of corruption is nearing its end. I'm done just sitting around and letting that fool do whatever he wants, thinking that there are no consequences. Nodding his head slowly, Hiruzen leaned back in his chair and closed his eyes, I agree. Danzo has been having way too long of a leash, but there is a huge risk in going after him as you are now. You're not strong enough to take on Danzo. 
Anzo is but a crippled man, Naruto argued with narrowed eyes, feeling a bit hurt that his mentor and grandfather figure was thinking so little of him. That's true, but you fail to realize that taking on Danzo also means taking on the entirety of Root. Every single henchman of Danzo's will be after you, and they won't care whether or not you're following my orders. And should you fail, then Danzo will know Itachi told you the truth. That would mean that Sasuke and Makoto would be in danger. Are you truly honestly ready to face that risk? Here is encountered, making Naruto's eyes narrow even further. Clenching his fist, Naruto calmed himself down through a couple of breaths, as long as Danzo lives, they'll be in danger. They may be safe in my family's estate, but what about when they are outside of it? Sasuke will eventually be a shinobi, I can't protect him from Danzo when he is out on missions. And Makoto, I can't always be around to protect her either. Even though I respect her with my entire being I doubt that she, as a Kanoichi that has been retired for years, could take on Danzo's route alone. That may be so indeed. Here is inside. Very well, I shall support your decision. At the very least I can train you so that you're ready to face him. Danzo has committed treason on many fronts so far, but he is a slippery man with way too many people inside Kanoha. If you plan to take out Danzo, you need to take care of the entirety of Root as well. That way, there won't rise another one like him from its remains and finish what he started. Only then can Makoto and Sasuke truly be safe. I'm not going to stop at Danzo. What? Naruto blinked slowly and looked out of the window, walking over to stand beside Hira's in sitting form. Closing his eyes, he raised a palm and placed it against the cold glass of the window, there are too many people like him out there. So many people are suffering because no one is doing anything. And then there are people that work with Danzo or have worked with him. As long as they remain alive, I can't sleep peacefully at night. Hiruzen looked up at the blonde from the corner of his eyes, that's a long list of people. There may even be certain international political figures in that bunch. Are you willing to take that risk? You should know that if you're caught then Kanoha can't be affiliated with you. You'd have been working alone. If it means that they are safe and that Itachi can come home then I'll do whatever it takes of me to achieve it. For far too long, people have been miserable all over the nations. I can't help but ask myself why nobody is doing anything. It's all politics, the fear of war. No one is willing to play the sacrificial pawn to get things done. Aside Itachi, that is. I'm starting tomorrow. Naruto finished and moved away from the window and toward the door slowly. At the end of Naruto's sentence, Hiruzen stood up from his chair and placed his palms on his desk, I won't allow you to go after Danzo so soon. Naruto narrowed his eyes a bit at that in confusion, turning his head around to look at the old man from over his shoulder, I thought you said you wouldn't stop me. I won't stop you from going after Danzo, but I will stop you from committing suicide. At your current state, you can't take him on alone. So until you can, I won't allow it. Hiruzen said sternly, raising his killing intent a bit to get his point across. The blonde teen sighed at that and softened his gaze, fine, I won't go after Danzo, but there are still plenty of people like him that deserve to die. Missing nin, bandit camps that are beyond what even experienced Chunin squads can handle. And I won't stop going after them, if they are below Danzo, then I'll do it. Are you sure this is how you want to go about it? This is the way to change things. When he arrived home that evening, an amazing smell entered his nostrils. The scent of home-cooked food was spreading all throughout the house, and he could feel the aroma control his body, almost having him levitate through the air and into the kitchen after getting out of his sandals. Standing in the doorframe, his eclectic azure eyes roamed over to see Makoto standing by the stove, steam rising up from the pan, as she hummed a gentle tune to herself with a small smile on her face. Which made him happy, she seemed genuinely at ease at the moment. So leaning in against the doorframe, he crossed his arms across his chest and smiled, something smells lovely. He noted loud enough for her to hear, watching with a grin as she blinked and turned around to face him. A surprised yet excited smile spread onto the woman's features as she clapped her hands together, Naruto-kun. You actually made it, that's great to see. She commented, with a hint of teasing leaking into her tone. What's that supposed to mean? He pouted and pushed off the doorframe and waltzed into the kitchen to rest against the kitchen counter beside the place that she was cooking. Bakodo raised a brow at him and tilted her head, pray tell, what do you think it means? It's not like you're never here for dinner, live off ramen and take out food, and way too often skip the most important meal of the day. Oh wait, you do. She giggled. Naruto's face fell more and more by each comment, and finally, at the mention of skipping the most important meal, which he assumed was breakfast, he was about ready to melt onto the floor out of embarrassment, hi. Hi. I get it, I get it, no need to point it out like that. I'm here now, aren't I? And I was here this morning too. The velocity of her giggles just increased as she placed a hand in front of her mouth and waved him off with the other one, I know, I was just messing with you. It's good to see you, it makes me happy to see that you're here. 
all the words had hinted that she meant she was happy for him being there for the meals, the words themselves caused a blush to morph onto his cheeks. Shaking his head, he chuckled, whatever. Snorting at his response, the older woman turned back to her cooking so it wouldn't burn. Dinner is ready in 10 minutes, so if you want to take a quick shower or anything beforehand, then you've got time for it. I'll take that suggestion then, be down in a minute. Naruto grinned and, and Shun shined upstairs, leaving a small gust of wind and a pile of leaves in his place. The veins in Makoto's forehead popped out at the sight, her hand clenching tightly around the handle of the frying pan as she sneered to herself, I'm so hitting him with this frying pan when he comes back I just cleaned the floors. After dodging several vicious attacks from a flaming frying pan, Naruto sat at the dinner table and ate with his family for the first time in a long, long time. He talked and laughed with the people around the table, talking with everyone with a big smile on his face. It made him happy to see that during dinner everyone came together and talked about what they did. Sad circumstances may have brought this family together, but they made the most out of it. And at this time, there was actually a peace treaty between Karen and Sasuke, and they seemed to actually get along. Even if they had their mini fight about how Karen too would have wanted to go with him to his office as Sasuke had. So he of course had to promise that he'd bring her along next time. Which seemed to calm her down and ease her mind. She at least smiled a lot at the offer and exclaimed quite loudly in the traditional Yuzumaki way she'd take him up on that the first chance she got. Kids would be troublesome. Even if he didn't visibly show it, there was something that saddened him. He had thought he'd been fine with living on his own, taking care of himself in his apartment for the past few years, but now that he was sitting here, he realized that the consistent feeling of emptiness was because he had missed this. Not just eating dinner with people, he could do that pretty much anywhere. No, it was the feeling of actually being part of a family again. To eat and sleep in the same household with people you considered precious to you. To wake up in the morning and have someone say good morning to you. Returning home to see people happy to see you. A family that welcomed you home and prayed for your safe return. It made him feel extremely guilty. He had almost abandoned all of this in a quest for more power so he could be stronger. Leaving every chance of ever getting something like this again behind just so that he could destroy Danzo. Not that he would quit on that. Danzo needed to die. And Itachi had to come back. This family wasn't complete without him and he felt that every day. He just needed to find some better way to go about it, he had to. He couldn't sacrifice the life he had finally been given for anything, these two things just had to exist side by side, but never intervening with the other. I can't tell them about it either. It won't be fair to them to know what I'm doing. It would just bring unnecessary confusion and pain, worry and sadness. I won't allow that. I won't ruin this family, no matter what. In the depth of the night, a hunting owl could be heard calling out within the dark woods. The gloomy tree trunks covered it from sight as it flapped its wings and flew throughout the shadowy paths. Beneath the owl, a dark figure could be seen making its way forward on the path. A large black hooded cloak flowing at the touch of the chilly night air and metal reflecting the light of the stars above as it closed in on the end of the road it was following. In the distance, campfires, tents, filled the place. The place filled the woods with a nasty smell, just like the people occupying the spot gave out a nasty sight. People worse than trash, the kind of humans that took pleasure in stripping the lives of innocent people just to steal their belongings and values. Taking the survivors as slaves, selling them in black market trades. The hooded figure waltzed slowly in the direction of the uplit part of the woods. The fires from within the camp casted shadows of the tent across the ground as the figure clenched its fist tightly around the handle of a blade, swinging beside its hip and down. As it got closer to the fires, the flickering light started to dance up the blade's metal. And with a few more steps, the light revealed his entire figure, revealing the physique of a male, yet the hood shadowed his face, hiding all of it from view, except just enough at the bottom to show his mouth. Being this close to the camp now, he figured it was only a matter of time before he was found out. He had done nothing to hide his presence after all. Because, what other way was better to catch filth? This was easy. They'd surround him like mosquitoes upon entering their camp, giving him free access to cut them all down. He didn't plan to stop there, no, he wanted them to feel pain like they made everyone else suffer due to their endless greed and thirst for violence and bloodshed. Make them feel miserable and alone in their final moments. It may have been sadistic, but their misery was joyful to him. Because it would mean that they were getting the punishment they deserved for all the horrible things they had done. And as if on cue, two figures with swords held high entered from their respective side of the woods, and if you looked closely enough, you could see a smirk on the lips of the hooded male. Boy. Who the hell are you? got a death wish or something. The one on the left roared out with laughter, the slurry tone of speech revealing that the fool was clearly drunk as he elbowed his companion in the side. 
with a snort, the hooded man lifted his blade a bit up from his side, the tip still resting below hip height, the broad side of the metal facing in the direction of the supposed guards, you guys are even stupider than I had originally thought, if they thought putting two pathetic drunks on guard duty is the clever decision, this will be even easier than I thought. The one on the right almost tripped over his own feet, being inches away from falling down on his sword and slitting his own throat as he giggled like an immature schoolgirl, this dude really got it in for him, doesn't he Kasuk? If we call the boss then we could bet on a new sword. I wouldn't mind getting a new one for my collection. The guy on the left gave a very mature snort and kicked his fellow guard in the kneecap, boy. It will be my sword. I did way more than you when we kidnapped those villagers. It should be mine, especially since I'm gonna be the one who kills him. Roaring out with laughter, his companion promptly smacked him with the back of his sword, which made the newcomer sweat drop, kill him. You? You've been drinking so much sake that you see naked women all over the place. This is going to take forever. The newcomer sighed to himself and reached into his cloak and pulled out a book and walked over. As the two guards were arguing, he tapped one on the shoulder and said, here. That's for you. In a way too friendly tone. Of course, being too drunk to actually notice the pattern on the paper, the guy just gave a triumphant ha. And turned to his fellow guard and put up the book between them, opening it up instantly for the world to see, even this guy thinks I'm better. Look at this, the new itcha itcha. Paradise. Akumo Experience Edition Jackpot. The other one's eyes widened and he waved his hands rapidly into the air as the guy instantly opened the book to reveal blank pages with the exception of a little piece of paper in the middle, you idiot. That's a paper bomb. The one holding the now identified paper bomb looked down at it with narrowed eyes before a nervous drop of sweat rolled down from his forehead, that's bullshit, and without getting to finish his sentence, he promptly exploded them together. Giving them a nice happy ending together. At least they could enjoy their favorite book series in the afterlife. Or not really, the book was blank. Oh well, who cares? Idiots. He scoffed with a light chuckle as he watched a cloud of ground debrief clear to reveal a small crater in the ground. Kind of satisfying how they just poofed out of existence, leaving no remains behind. Well, the remains had probably just scattered into the forest around him. Never mind that. Shaking his head, he adjusted his cloak and tightened his grip around the sword's handle. Panic was already spreading across the entire camp, the explosion from the paper bomb had started a fire in a nearby tent, lighting even more of the forest up with the flames. It was a thrilling sight, the lowest scum of the earth gathering together like cockroaches from left and right. It was like the typical crowd of bandits, standing there in their ragged clothing. Their sickening sake stinking breath traveling through the air, and their low-quality weapons made out of the worst scrap, raised high so they could look more intimidating. Who the hell are you? You scum what did you do to Kasu Kandaichi? He didn't really feel like answering them. What would the point be? They were all just going to die anyway. And he didn't feel like talking, it would mean that he needed to breathe in this hellhole. That couldn't be good for your health. However, he also felt like it would be a very pleasant sight to see them quiver in fear. To declare that today they'd all die and be tortured for eternity by the Shinigami for their sins, that he'd take great pleasure in spilling their blood and would love to see their lives leaving their bodies. So with a blank face, he raised his blade slightly from his side. A bright blue light exploded around the blade, lighting up his face to show the stone-cold expression covering his features. The next thing that happened wouldn't be a story for children. Naruto sighed as he snuck back home that morning, entering through the window with the early morning sun in the background, signaling that it was just about four in the morning. Pulling the hood down from his face, he stared at himself in the mirror. The dried bloodstains on his face made him cringe with disgust. His cloak was soaked, and he was afraid to even try and count the number of people that had left the five elemental nations surface this night. It had been like this for a month, in the night, he snuck out of the house. While everyone thought he was sound asleep in his room, he put on a cloak and traveled to the next spot on his list. There were large dark spots under his eye, and he looked generally tired. Ever since that family dinner, he had sworn to make this world a better place for those he cared about, but it was a large task to do on his own. And he felt like he was getting nowhere at the moment. As quick as he could terminate a bandit camp, two more would pop up. The largest number of camps he had managed to take down in a night was seven, and he didn't bother with the small ones. Those were mostly reserved for newbie squads that had to experience their first kill or just tune in squads in general. So to say that he took down seven large camps that consisted of a mix of nuke nin and bandits would be preposterous in most years. He had also been beyond tired when he returned that morning and almost didn't bother with getting the blood-soaked clothes off of his body before collapsing in his bed. He had to, however, because if he left bloodstains in the house, there would be questions. And he also didn't think about even attempting to wash these clothes in this house. No, he used his old apartment for that. Speaking of his old apartment, which had been his new base of operations. 
base and base, he used it to store weapons and cloaks, along with a list of last known camp and Newtonian positions, and that was about it. Yet, it was a safe space, a place where he could slump down against a wall after a long night and not worry about some specific people walking in. But a grunt, he pulled the reeking cloak off of his body and sealed it along with the rest of his clothes into a scroll before any blood could hit the ground. And with tired, unmotivated steps, he forced himself into the shower to wash the stench of sweat, blood, dirt, and wetnet away. By the time he was finished, he felt way more refreshed. Today would probably be an all-nighter, it was already morning, and he had matters to attend to today. He was going to the Anbu headquarters for the first time in a long while, mostly to get a new uniform, since the one he had worn last were destroyed. But at the same time, he wanted to see what was new over there. Due to the Achiha massacre, he felt like he was probably going to either be reassigned or Team Ro had gotten a new member to replace Itachi. Or perhaps they would just continue with their remaining members. Hard to say at the moment. Speaking of Team Ro, he felt like he hadn't seen Yugao or Kakashi Nai in forever. Would probably be awkward, especially meeting Yugao the last time he had seen her, if he recalled correctly, would be when he was having a miniature rampage. Scrap that, he had a major mental breakdown. No reason to sugarcoat it. All the more reason to get stronger and become a more reliable shinobi. And he had made progress by leaps and bounds lately, if he wasn't out massacring poor shitheads, he was training his ass off at the usual mountain. It was also one of the only places where he wouldn't be found unless Hiruzen himself came there to drag his ass back. His Kenjutsu had improved to the point he preferred engaging in fights with his sword instead of with Tejutsu, he had usually done that since with his chakra reserves, he could get a pretty mean chakra infused punch in if he managed to strike first. But, he had recently experienced that there were some aspects of Kenjutsu that gave some completely different upsides at the engagement of fights. Extended range, chakra infused blade improving the cutting and tearing potential of the blade, ninjutsu infused Kenjutsu where you could throw lightning blades at people at the swing of your blade. It had some pros and cons, but he felt like the pros far outweigh the cons. He hadn't slacked off with his tajutsu just because of that, but the only real focus he had put on it was the things Hiruzen made him do during their training. Like, climbing up the steep side of the mountain with a boulder chained to his ankles. Yeah, that had not been enjoyable. Not only did he have to lift all of that weight and keep himself to the side of the mountain, but he felt like he was going to fall every time he had to drag the boulder further with his feet. Instead of going hunting that evening, he had decided to just settle for some more training without Hiruzen's torture being present. Shaking his head free of all these flashbacks, Naruto skipped down the stairs silently to not wake anyone up, with each stop Naruto came closer to the kitchen, but as he was on the final step, he started hearing sounds from the kitchen. Which was odd, it was quite early. So unless they were having some breaking and entering the action, then someone was up quite early. So, waiting for a second, he finally stepped into the kitchen only to see the sliding door to the porch open, revealing a familiar mop of raven hair, sitting out there with a cup of water between his fingers. Lifting his head up to gaze at the clock, Naruto raised a brow it was only 4.30, give or take, in the morning. What was Sasuke doing up this early? Well, only one way to find out. Stretching his back, the blonde walked over and crouched down, unable to keep a grin off of his face, as he let out a silent boo. It was, however, enough for Sasuke to completely do a 180 on him and almost smacking him in the face with the cup. Naruto couldn't keep the grin off his face as he slumped down next to the raven, ruffling the young boy's hair as he muttered, that's not funny. It was a bit funny though. So, what are you doing up this early? Naruto questioned with a small yawn. I could ask you the same thing, Naruto Nai. That was somewhat true. Humming slightly, Naruto leaned up against the wall of the house, I was out training, but don't tell your mom. Well, that was true if you could count killing as training. Not that Sasuke needed to know about that yet. Hell, even saying he was out training this late at night was a risk in the first place. Sasuke looked curious, but his cheek slowly became redder as he fumbled with his words, trying to figure out what to say, or rather how to say it. The blonde did already have a slight idea of where this was going, nightmares. With a look of surprise, Sasuke looked up to his older brother figure and mumbled, how did you? Naruto just smiled and folded his fingers behind his head and closed his eyes, I get them too, you know. It isn't some taboo topic after all, it's perfectly normal. The younger boy didn't really seem to feel that much better about it, I just dream that I'm there again, in the middle of it all watching everyone die without being able to do anything. He muttered with a frown. Placing a hand on top of Sasuke's head, Naruto ruffled the dark locks once more, not everyone died, your mother is still here. I'm still here. Karen and Akari are also here for you, I know it's hard trust me, I feel it every day too, but we just have to look on the bright side sometimes. Fight to protect what we still have, that's all we can do. I just want to get over it I hate feeling like this. Me too Sasuke, me too. The sad part is just that it never goes away, it just becomes something we have to live with. 
Some days will be worse than others, but eventually, you'll be able to handle it. Take it from someone that has already experienced it, it's just a question of time. Naruto mumbled out while swinging an arm around Sasuke and giving the young boy a brief squeeze. Sasuke didn't seem to say anything after that, and Naruto just guessed that the boy needed time to process what he had just said. Maybe that had been too harsh to say, but lying about it would have been worse. Giving a short sigh, Naruto stood up from the porch again, we should go back to sleep before someone catches us being awake this early in the morning. He chuckled a bit at that, scratching the back of his head as he walked in with a still quiet Sasuke in tow. The blonde watched silently as Sasuke waltzed down to his room on his lonesome. Naruto would lie if he said he wasn't worried in the slightest. Nightmares were expected, but Sasuke had yet to really act out yet. The young boy acted a lot like he usually did, but he was more silent at times, and then these short episodes of a nightmare. And even then, not a lot happened. Internally Naruto waited for him to act out in a more extreme way. He knew he had done so when his parents died, he had been angry, devastated, and beyond sad. And that had resulted in him lashing out at the people around him until someone decided to put their foot down and say that enough was enough. Shisui had been that person. One of the only people that had the guts to tell him that it wasn't just black and white out there in the world, but an endless amount of gray variants. The problem was just that Shisui had also been kind in the process, even if it had been a hard truth to learn, he had needed to hear it, so it had also helped that Shisui was also comforting in the process. But Shisui wasn't here anymore, and Naruto felt hopeless in comparison to him. He didn't know what to say, or if he had the right. He wanted to help, he tried, and at times it seemed like it helped, but what would he do if Sasuke really acted out one day? Just like he had done. Upon entering his room again, Naruto sunk down in his bed and stared up at the ceiling and decided to sleep on it. He really shouldn't go to sleep, since there was a good chance that he'd likely oversleep at this point, but he felt so tired. And the bed was beyond comfortable right now. Maybe a little nap wouldn't hurt. By the time he came around again, he groaned slightly as someone shook his shoulder gently while calling out, wake up sleepyhead. That had to be a first. Had anyone woken him up like this since before his parents died? No this was the first time he had actually been woken up by an outside source other than sunlight or the sounds of birds chirping in the early morning. Groggily opening his eyes, Naruto came face to face with the gentle expression of someone sitting on the side of his bed. Makoto Basin. He asked while rubbing his eyes, shifting his gaze out of the window to see that at least a few hours had passed. Had he really overslept as he feared? Don't worry, it's just a little over 9.30. You had to leave at 10, right? She asked in a soft tone, yet for some reason, she seemed a lot more happy and relaxed. Had something happened while he was asleep? Sitting up on the bed, so his back rested against the headboard, the blonde looked on curiously as the older woman just smiled, you seem in awfully good spirits this morning, what's the occasion? He smiled back, unable to even attempt to stop himself. Why? Well, he liked the sight. It was nice to see her happy. Shaking her head slowly, she giggled softly, no reason, in particular, just the first time in so long that I've actually witnessed you deciding to sleep in and take it easy. Naruto had to fight the urge to choke on his own salvia as she said that. He'd definitely ruin the mood if he said what he had actually done to get this tired. Well, once in a while went hurt. Thank you for waking me up though, would have been a real pain if I had overslept. He grinned sheepishly and gave a grateful look. If this is your definition of once in a while, then please update your mental dictionary a bit. She snorted and flicked his forehead. What the hell? With an annoyed grunt, Naruto poked her in the side, HN, whatever. Rolling her eyes at her blonde idiot, Mikoto stood up from the bedside and pulled the curtains completely open. I saved us some breakfast, I thought it'd be lonely to eat on your own, so I waited until you woke up. Feeling his cheeks warm up a bit, Naruto scratched the back of his head, thank you, um, I'll join you in a minute then. Then I'll go reheat breakfast, take your time, with your speed, then you should be able to make it to wherever you gotta go within 5 minutes. And with that, she left the room and went down the stairs. Still sitting on his bed, Naruto sighed before kicking the sheets away and standing up. He felt a bit guilty, she had looked genuinely pleased and happy about him taking it easy, while he in reality had done the exact opposite by mass murdering scumbags the entire night till the point he couldn't even wake up early on his own. Did it really please her that much? He assumed so. It just made him feel even worse. The whole family and mission coexisting were really tough. He wanted to make a difference, but also be there for his family yet it just seemed to backfire. In all honesty, he felt terrible about having to lie and sneak around. Was this also why he felt hopeless when thinking about helping Sasuke? Having no idea, Naruto clenched his eyes shut for a moment. Rubbing his face with his palms, the blonde started going down the stairs to feel a heavenly aroma entering his nostrils. Did breakfast always just smell better after just waking up? Well, he had to sleep in more often because the smell made him even more hungry than he should be.
And the food was reheated, so how much would he starve if it was freshly cooked? Only Kami knew. Breakfast ended up being mostly a small affair with some small talk before Naruto eventually had to find his way to the Anbu headquarters. Honestly, he wasn't looking forward to it. He had, after all, been isolated from the world ever since the massacre. Not to the extent where he didn't go outside, because he did, but he put effort into avoiding too many familiar faces. Mostly because he didn't want the pity. People looking at him like he'd break, and he couldn't even start to imagine how Makoto or Sasuke must feel when they are out in the village. Speaking of Sasuke, it was about time he returned to the academy too if he recalled correctly. And he had promised the young boy that he'd come along. Because he wanted to ensure Sasuke was completely okay with it and that there weren't any issues. But also because he wanted to shield him slightly from all the stares that he'd received without a doubt. He'd have to ask Mikoto about the specific day again, he was almost certain that it was either tomorrow or the day after, and he didn't want to screw things up by not showing up or being too tired to even get out of bed on his own. Just like he had been this morning, where Mikoto actually had to wake him from his deep slumber. Even if waking up to her smiling was a nice sight. He mentally mused before a pink blush formed on his cheek as he clenched his eyes shut for a brief moment as he walked through the village, wait what? He thought slightly amused. Well, not that there was anything wrong with it. Seeing people you care about smile was probably the best thing to him at the moment. Before too long, he found himself at the entrance to the underground base. Yes, the Anbu headquarters were placed underground. Which made sense to him, where else would it be more secure and hidden away? Plus it would be a whole lot harder to infiltrate this way, especially since no one aside from members, commanders, or the Hokage knew the secret entrance and code phrases needed. Also, if you didn't have an Anbu mark on your shoulder when arriving, then you were likely going to see the nice man Ibiki. The base was beneath the Hokage Tower, or at least the first part of it was. The Anbu headquarters and base were in general huge, to say the least. There was everything you could dream about as a military figure. Barracks where you could sleep in case you had missions back to back and you didn't have time to go home, which consisted of a private room with a bath. The cafeteria for nutritious food and rations for the missions and an armory in case you needed to replace gear, armor, weapons, and even your mask. There were more down here, but the rest was not of importance at the moment. After getting cleared by stating his name, code name, and his reason for coming, he was politely told to show proof of his status, and thus he revealed the mark on his right shoulder by pulling his Hayori off of his arm and pulling the sleeve of his shirt up. He knew it was protocol to do this, but people mostly knew who each other was down here, unless you were new to the team or Anbu in general. People in Anbu worked closely together, and it wasn't against the rules to show your face to the people within your squad or other Anbu, only those outside of it when you were on duty. So him having to say who he was and having to put on his mask before entering was kind of annoying in a way, but he had to respect it, at least he supposed so. Walking through the underground base was a bit odd, mostly because he was getting a lot of stares. It was no secret that he had been one of the more active members alongside Kakashi Nai, so they were probably curious about the sudden leave. It had been quite a long time since he had last had a mission. A lot had happened, and those who knew who he was also knew the reason why. Upon reaching the armory, Naruto walked inside the darkroom to see a hooded figure with a mask, symbolizing an eagle behind a pair of iron bars. Lifting his hand up in a casual wave, Naruto responded slowly, Raven, here to pick up a new uniform. After having stated his name and what he was after, Eagle gave a quiet nod without saying a word before disappearing out into a backroom. It only took a few minutes before the hooded Anbu member came back carrying a neatly folded uniform that he pushed through a small gap at the bottom of the iron bars, preventing outsiders from entering the armory. Naruto nodded his head and changed into the uniform before folding his clothes on a nearby bench and afterwards sealed them into a scroll that he put into his shuriken pouch. Looking at the mirror, he did a few stretches to test if the uniform was a good fit and it fitted him perfectly. As he was about to exit the armory, Eagle stood up and said something for the first time since he had arrived, Raven-san, I was to inform you that Inu-san wished to see you after you picked up the uniform. Please go ahead and see your taichu. Eagle nodded and sat down again. Under the mask, Naruto sweat dropped. Eagle had always been a bit of a stick in the mud, he was honestly certain that the man beneath the mask was a high uga at this point. The amount of formality he spoke with, along with his body language, gave that away almost instantly. Just nodding at the fellow masked man, Naruto set out into the base to try and figure out where Kakashi Nai would be at this time. It was still early, and if he had specifically requested that he came around when he had picked up the uniform, then he was most likely not on a mission. Unless something urgent came up of course. After waltzing around for a few minutes, Naruto came across the familiar mop of gravity-defying hair, sitting up against one of the pillars holding the ceiling up with his favorite book in hand. Lifting his hand in a casual wave again, Naruto watched as Kakashi clapped the book shut and stood up from his seated position. I heard you were looking for me. 
Naruto greeted with a slight smile not that anyone could see it due to the mask he was wearing. Kakashi gave a visible nod and stretched, Hi, I heard that you were coming to get that uniform of yours today. So I figured it would be a good time to talk about how the team is going to operate from today and onward. Nodding his head in understanding, the blonde crossed his arms over his chest, So, what is the plan? Did we get a replacement, or are we continuing with just our remaining four members? With a slight hum, Kakashi shrugged, We haven't been informed of that yet, so far the commander thinks that we'd work well as a four-man cell. He has to confirm it with the Hokage first though, so at the moment we are just going to operate with the people we have. Naruto just raised a brow in confusion, isn't it a bit extreme to go consult the Hokage about a single Anbu team? Well, given that the commander thinks we're the most efficient team and possibly the strongest in Anbu at the moment, he'd like to be sure. It isn't rare to see teams operating in uneven numbers, but given our previous mission records, then there is a question about whether or not we'd perform as efficiently as before. He should also know that he could slow us down a ton, should he decide to add another person to the team that isn't on our level weight, that sounded arrogant Naruto sweat dropped. Takashi just chuckled at that and patted his shoulder, it's nonetheless true, and the commander knows that much. He won't assign anyone he thinks isn't on par with us or close enough. The slightest change could mean life or death out there, so rest assured he'll think hard about this. Well, alright then. So when do we start going back out in the field? Scratching his chin, Kakashi looked to be deep in thought for a couple of seconds. Hmm, we should be deployed fairly soon. We just got back from an assignment recently, so we have a couple of days to rest. You know the drill, by the time we have a mission, someone will come and fetch you. Nodding his head in understanding, Naruto stretched and sighed, well then, I guess I'll see you then. And don't worry, I'm not out of shape or anything, I'll keep up. He smirked underneath his mask. However, Kakashi seemed to frown instead, I'm not concerned about whether or not you'll keep up, you always have. The only thing that could concern me is whether or not your head is in it. Let's be honest with each other, a lot has happened. Would you be able to focus? Don't worry about me Taichu Nai. Naruto chuckled with an amused grin as Kakashi smacked his forehead over the mask at the nickname, I'll keep a clear mind, otherwise Oji-san wouldn't have allowed me to go back into duty. Much longer away from missions and I'll become rusty, all that paperwork can't be good. Even if he was still worried, Kakashi realized he had no reason to doubt Naruto's words. No matter the turmoil, he had always kept a clear head while on duty within the Anbu. If he began to doubt him now, it would just make him a bad captain of Team Row. Alright then, until next time then. And don't be late. Kakashi grinned and promptly shunshined out of the area. Naruto just scratched his neck while shaking his head, turning around as he started to walk toward the exit of the hideout. I should be the one to tell you that, I'm not the one that's always late whenever we go out to train. Naruto got out of the Anbu headquarters and immediately seemed to relax more as he breathed in the fresh afternoon air beneath the edges of his Anbu mask. As he was about to leave and go home, he felt a hand trap his wrist in an iron grip. It startled him slightly as he turned his head, he had been a bit too lost in thought to notice someone walking up behind him. But a bit of an annoyed huff, Naruto sighed, what now? He groaned mentally to himself as he turned his head, only to have his breath taken away at the furious no sad looking woman gazing up at him. Ah yes, this had been what he had wanted to avoid. Since he had basically gone underground after the massacre, hiding behind the walls of his house, he hadn't looked forward to meeting Yugao and several others again. Nothing lasts forever, so here she was, and her eyes were demanding answers. Aheyo. Naruto answered a bit nervously. He mentally had a game of roulette with himself. If it landed on black, he'd get punched. If it landed on red, then he'd get kicked. And if he somehow managed to get green, he'd get saved by unknown means. Yugao's face remained in the same expression, her grip tightening on his wrist as she stared directly at his eyes through the Anbu mask. Take. It. Off. She retorted seriously. What, no date first. Naruto tried joking, but all he got to do was wince from her grip tightening to the point it felt like his bone was going to snap in half. Now. She hissed, her eyes narrowing dangerously as veins started showing on the arm she was holding him back with. The blonde was a bit too shocked to really do anything. Here he had expected more of an earful, but Yugao seemed to be in a mix of anger and sadness. Should he just do as she said? The sweet time he took to decide ended up biting him in the rear, because before he could do as he was asked, her hand reached up and grabbed onto his mask. Yugao watched intensely as she lifted the porcelain object away from the blonde's face, and with each passing second, her eyes widened slowly, and her tight grip lessened. It felt like a crack in her heart was spreading from top to bottom as she looked over the blonde's tired features the dark rings around his eyes, and the pale sweaty skin. You poor fool she sniffled slightly and released his hand before her arms snuck around his midsection, engulfing him in a light hug. As this happened, Naruto had yet to really understand what was going on. The look on her face had startled him like she had seen a ghost. What's the matter Yuga-chan? I can't possibly be that ugly. 
He chuckled, mostly to himself. Aka you aren't ugly, but you look sick. Are you even sleeping? She asked softly after releasing him from her embrace. Slowly she raised her right hand to press against his face. He truly did look terrible like this. Naruto just sweat dropped, isn't that basically the same thing? Dodging questions as always I see. Sighing with a small frown, Naruto scratched the back of his head, sorry, I'm not going to lie, it has been a rough time since we last spoke. The purple-haired woman just shook her head and gave him another squeeze that he for once returned, I know that, I couldn't find you anywhere so I got worried, I couldn't imagine what you might have been doing to yourself. Genma sensei also asked around, but no one knew anything. Naruto tried his best to smile, it was bad at first, to be completely honest. I wanted to run away. I know that was cowardly to think about, but I wanted to get the hell out of here. Just run and not look back until I could finally face Sasuke Kun and Makoto Basin. Why would you have to face them? It wasn't your fault that everything happened. Yuga retorted with a slight glare. This blonde idiot always beat himself up over absolutely everything, especially when it had nothing to do with him in the first place. Taking other people's pain upon himself with no purpose. Shrugging his shoulders, Naruto bit the inside of his cheek, if I hadn't rampaged against Sensei, then I would maybe have been awake to do something. He lied, of course, he knew the truth, but doubted he could tell anyone unless he got permission from Hiruzen. Telling Makoto that he knew had been a risk in itself, but the difference was that she already knew. As he stood there thinking, he felt a fist to his chest that made him raise a brow. There hadn't been much force behind it, but enough to be noticeable. You're such an idiot, you know that right? Beating yourself up over absolutely everything. She was probably right, but he never was a good listener, was he? I'm sorry for worrying everyone, I just needed time to regroup. Naruto apologized, trying to pull off another smile. It felt fake though, he didn't really want to smile. The woman just gave a slow sigh and nodded her head, I see. I have to go, for now, I have border patrol. Please don't go hide again, I want to be able to find you when I get back. Got it. Haven't you just come back from a mission and been told to rest for a few days? Taichu told me. Don't dodge it Naruto. The blonde grunted a bit and scratched his scalp, fine, I won't go hiding again. I've come back to Anbu anyway, so it's not like I can even if I wanted to. He pouted, crossing his arms over his chest. Yu Gao just giggled and patted his shoulder, good, then I can keep an eye on you. Someone gotta make sure you stay out of trouble. Feeling like he had been slapped in the back of the head, Naruto lost his footing for a second before glaring at her, I don't get into trouble that often. And you dodged the question about the border mission too, don't be a hypocrite. With a mighty snort, Yu Gao gave him the most unbelieving look in the world. Oh yeah sure, you never get into trouble. Like anyone who has read your mission reports, or even taken a look at your bingo book, would believe that. And well, I like to stay busy. Border patrol may be boring, but it gives some extra money. And I want that new sword, as you know. Naruto couldn't help but actually smile at that. Yu Gao and her swords were like Naruto and his Raymon, yeah, I definitely know that. Oh well then, have a pleasant border patrol. He teased and waved toward her. Shaking her head, she sighed, because we all know that border patrol is a joy. Definitely, no lies at all, it's definitely my favorite time of the month. Feeling tempted to sigh and shake her head again, Yuga put her mask in place and turned around, you should go home and take a nap. You look terrible. And with that, she was gone in a swirl of leaves. And nap he would, but probably not in the most appropriate place. Because as soon as Yuga had left his side, he had waltzed up onto the Hokage monument and promptly laid down on top of his father's stone face. His back resting up against one of the many rocks that should resemble his father's spiky hair. As he laid there, he fidgeted around with his Anbu mask between his fingers. Do I really want to do this? He mumbled mentally to himself. He had loved Anbu, yes he had. Even if he had several complaints about the mask and some of the protocols, he couldn't disagree that he had learned a lot and gotten several dozen times stronger from serving. The problem was just that he had gotten kind of used to life outside of Anbu. When he had first joined, he had lived alone. He could come and go as he pleased, and he didn't have anything better to do. Now, he had people waiting for him at home. And it was also people he looked forward to getting home to. It had felt quite good to be in his uniform, even his mask had given him a slight sense of security. This was a norm he had been used to, the life of an Anbu operative. It was a safe space, where he knew how stuff worked. It just didn't help him on a personal plan. He had a family, responsibilities, goals, and his mission. Anbu felt like it could get in the way. Yet, it felt wrong to just throw it away. Well, just because he resigned didn't mean he'd never come back. Sighing while running a hand through his blonde hair, he leaned back and stared up at the sky while resting the mask on his lap, contemplating what decision he should make. You seem thoughtful this afternoon. A voice proclaimed to his right, and Naruto instantly recognized the voice as Hiruzen's. Without moving, Naruto kept staring up at the passing clouds, I guess you could say that, yeah. 
he chuckled for a brief moment. Nodding his head, Hirazin sat down next to him and shared the view of the skies above with his grandson, Care, to let an old know what it's about. Shrugging his shoulders, Naruto tapped his fingers gently against the front side of the mask in his lap, just don't really know what I'm supposed to do now. I got my Anba uniform today, yet, even if it felt good. It also just feels like I'm walking in circles. Not really getting where this was going, Hirazin gave him a look, elaborate. Lifting his hand to slightly scratch his cheek with his index finger before letting it drop again, being an Anbu, and in general Team Row, makes me feel like I'm just in the same spot I've always been. I guess I'm not sure if this is what I want to do anymore. For as long as I can remember, Anbu was the normal in my life. Hirazin scratched his beard for a second as he leaned in against a stone monument. Naruto had indeed been an Anbu for almost a majority of his life at this rate. It wouldn't be weird for him to consider this as one of the most normal things he had experienced in his life, but, as suspected, the blonde had started to question his involvement in the Anbu program after getting some perspective. Because this was in all honesty the reason he had gone out of his way to find Naruto at this time of the day. They didn't have training yet, and he didn't have a mission, but he had known that today Naruto would have to pick up his uniform again. And be forced to look at the future from a certain standpoint between two worlds. One world where he was a public figure, Hirazin's apprentice, and a person able to spend a lot more time around the people close to him. Anbu didn't have as much free time, they knew that when they signed up, but a decent quantity of people did so anyway. In the end, Hirazin just chuckled slightly to himself, in the end, when you start growing up, your desire for change happening starts to grow. Even if Anbu is a sense of security, it was always just a question about when you'd start to grow out of it. You got into the Anbu at one of the earliest ages, which is too early to decide where in the system you wish to be. Naruto raised a brow at that, you never expected me to stay in the Anbu, did you? Hirazin shook his head briefly, I didn't. For a while you actually almost changed my mind, I would have thought you had a change of heart long ago, but I guess the real trigger was the two Uchiha, the two Uzumaki. You never really had to think about much else, so when they appeared in your home, stuff started to change. So what should I do? Hirazin took a deep breath before answering, well, since you're now my apprentice in public. There might not be as much time for Anbu, but you could always keep the mask in case you want to go back. Are you giving me an excuse to quit? Naruto chuckled slightly. Hirazin stood up after that and slowly started to leave, mumbling a quiet no idea what you're talking about. Just think about it. Naruto could almost sense the old man smirk. So that's it for today, I will stop here and hope you enjoyed this video if you do please hit the like button, share and subscribe, also don't forget to drink water and do support fanfiction author link in description, take care bye.